Um, welcome. I am Andy Shaw Rogers. I head up the co supplier member base here at Common Objective, and I'm delighted to host this second session of Co Expo Fabric Shop in partnership with Recytex. So, the team presenting today uh, in this session, we have Laurent, who heads up our global partnerships. Uh, we've got myself, uh, we've got Tamsin, who is founder and CEO of Common Objective. Uh, Alicia Gotti, who is owner of AG Textile Studios, and Stephen Chung, who is founder and president of Recyctex, our partner for this session. The uh, agenda for today, for, for this uh, coming up hour and a half, is we are going to do an overview uh, with Laurent, and he's, we're going to explore some trends, and then a Q&A with Stephen Chung from Recyctex and Alicia Gotti from AG Textiles, who are both experts in their fields and have some uh, excellent, excellent content to, to, to input in that session. We're then going to look at, our, have an introduction to our suppliers. So these are the exhibitors uh, who are in this session and we have some extraordinary suppliers uh, who we, we are excited to share with you. Uh, and they're going to present themselves in just 60 seconds, which is quite a challenge. Uh, and then after that, there will be breakout sessions whereby each of them will be in breakout rooms and you uh, are invited to choose which breakout sessions you want to join to get to know them a bit better to ask any questions you have, uh, any questions you have. And then we'll finally wrap up uh, back in this main Zoom room. So to make the most out of Expo, as we uh, move on to the next slide, uh, we, we really want you to say who you are in the chat. Um, we would like you to post questions and bookmark. Uh, and as, we, as, as you do that, um, uh, sorry, connect, connect with each other by putting your co-profile link in the chat. Uh, and as you do that, you can actually message each other on the co-platform because uh, that's an amazing way that we recently launched for connecting with each other and staying in contact. Uh, now head to the next slide. This is how to access all of Co. So not just now during Expo, but this is permanently on the site, permanently on the platform. Uh, and you can start right now if you're not a member of Co yet. You can join Co for free uh, and set up an individual profile. Uh, and by doing that, you're then setting your preferences and you are matched with other individuals and businesses, as well as content, uh, which will be of relevance to you. We, we have two algorithms on Co. One is a matching algorithm that does exactly what I just said. The other algorithm uh, is, a, is a, a ranking algorithm, and you can let, set up a business profile for your business. And by doing that, you will be found by other people looking for businesses like you, yours. Uh, and that the ranking algorithm boosts the businesses to the top who are the most sustainable. And tied in with that are the co-awards where you can win, your business can win a co-award, uh, which not only boosts you in the algorithm higher and the search rankings higher, but it also uh, gets you extra free uh, publicity and get noticed uh, by the wider sustainable fashion movement. You can connect with each other and message each other on the co-platform uh, and you can ensure that the connections you make right now during these few days at Expo uh, become important, valuable, significant relationships um, where trade can happen and where we can also learn from one another. We've got a, a plethora of resources and training on Common Objective. Some is access, accessible for, the, for free members. Some is paid premium content. Uh, it is all fantastic, useful. Uh, a lot of people come to Co in order to, 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 be, to receive that, uh, to read those resources and to receive that training. So as I hand over to, I'll hand over to Tamsin now. Uh, no, I'm not going to hand over to Lauren now, who's going to look at the trends uh, around the theme of fabric shop. Laurent. Andy, thank you so, so much. And also from my side, a very warm welcome to everybody who's joined the session or maybe who's just joining the session. Welcome to the second part of the first day of Co Expo. As Andy already said, I'm going to speak a little bit about the sustainable fabric trends and the future movement in, let's say, the uh, fabric sector. 
And I will start off my little presentation with a big thank you to Alessia Gotti. She is part of this session. She will be speaking later on, and she is one of the leading sustainable fabrics agents. And what she did for us is she provided us with a list of the top six fastest selling fabrics right now. And as you can see, this is vegan leather. This is regenerative agriculture and cotton. This is traceable materials. This is organic linen mixes. This is anything recycled and Royka and alternative Elastan. So these trends in fabric sourcing are reflected in production volumes. As you can see, textile exchanges here released in its 2021 organic cotton market report that 2019, the 2020 season saw the largest volume of organic cotton fiber harvested globally to date. And man-made and re regenerated synthetics currently dominate the ethical fashion market according to 54.5 of the total market in 2019. However, going forward, organic textiles are slated to be the fastest growing segments in the ethical fashion market at 16.2% a year. Dead stock fabrics are also trending right now. According to WGS WGSN, the leading trend forecaster in the fashion industry, the new spring and summer 21 products labeled as dead socks surged 775% in the US, 383% in Germany, and 178% in the UK. YOY led by free people, Netta Potter, Urban Outfitters, and Nordstrom, with a big growth in knitted top dresses, bags, and jewelry. And while in April, the fashion conglomerate LVMH launched Norna Source, a B2B platform that allows designers and brands to purchase dead stock fabrics. And with that intro to dead stock fabric and the future of fabric, I'd love to hand over to Andy again. It is you, Andy, isn't it? Actually, it's me. It is Tamsin. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> Amazing. Over to you, Tavazin. <laughs> thank you, Laurel. <laughs> so, and thank you, Andy. Um, just to emphasize for those of you, I know that most of you are members of CO because we've checked you against our list. So it's wonderful to have you as part of the community. If you're not yet a member, please do join. And one of the reasons we have business, we ask businesses to create their profiles is we're trying to create a race to the top. Um, we believe that sourcing partnerships should be win-win partnerships and that means that suppliers want to know about brands too and creating a profile on, on co is the way you can do that so we've got um two amazing speakers joining us for the q a session um and i'd first of all like to welcome alicia um i know you're in the session if you want to unmute yourself um, so Alicia is, is one of our um, exhibitors in this session. Um, and I have a question for you relating to, um, to some of your, some of the brands you've worked with, um, having supported a wide range of different brands with fabric sourcing. What do you recommend as the best place to start? So in this room, we have a lot of different representatives from businesses, large and small, who are looking for solutions. What are your recommendations for them? Well, hi everyone. Thank you for having me here and for the wonderful introduction. Um, so obviously, yes, I own AJ Textile and I work with a lot of brands and it, it could be big brands, smaller brands, but when you're looking at specific fabric sourcing, the easiest way to start is to look at your current, if you are already selling products, look at your current best selling and look at what is the fabric composition. And you can start looking at the closer most sustainable version of, of that fabric, but also look at um, not just the fabric, but where do you make your garments? Where is your manufacturing unit uh, placed? So obviously I work a lot, I'm very um, European center. I work a lot with suppliers in Europe and therefore, at, for example, if you are sourcing fabric from a certain country, you can look at manufacturing in the same country that's gonna help with 
um, your carbon footprint and therefore enhance your sustainability uh, 360 degrees. That's a good idea as well. And then if you otherwise are a bigger brand that has more uh, direct contact with your own supply chain, you can look into introducing innovative yarn um, to the fabric mills you already work with. That's one of the best way to, to enhance your sustainability and your fabric sourcing and, and help. And also bear in mind that nowadays, mills and suppliers across Europe are introducing and are looking to um, have more innovative yarns. Uh, for example, one of the biggest shirt fabric producer in the world is doing exactly that and the industry is following that trend. So that's what I will say as a general rule. Then case by case, um, there's differences, but this is generally what I will say. Thank you, Alicia. And just like to draw everyone's attention to some resources that we've got that support that process, actually how to choose the right fabric. Um, if one of the team wouldn't mind posting the link to the Co Expo Hub, um, where you can find all the exhibitors from Co Expo, but also we pulled together some of the resources on Co that are just what you need to to make those um, choices. Um, so, Elisa, my second question for you is what. What products and material or materials do you think are most promising in relation to both sustainability and commercial viability? What's emerging? What, and because you work across a variety of different com companies, what are you seeing? Definitely when we're looking at um, commercially available and innovative material, uh, we can look at um, or a new yarn coming. When I talk about yarn, because it's it's important when you think about um, a fabric is the composition of yarn. And for example, many brands are asking me for alternative to cotton, which is the most used fabric um, uh, in in when we look at natural fabrics. So you can look at kapok, which is um, uh, coming from cotton, and it's an innovative new uh, fiber, and it's very sustainable. Hemp and ramie, all the seaweed and algae derivates. Um, also think about and always ask about the finishing of the fabric. Please don't forget that. That is very important when you're sourcing um, sustainably. Um, then obviously alternative material to animal leather as well as very exciting new uh, bio eco fur. Um, so alternative to animal fur coming to the market with no more acrylic that are coming from sustainable and renewable, renewable material. And also just a little note on cotton, there is a lot of um, a, a lot of interest in cotton in transition, which I'm sure you talked before about it when you talk about regenerative agriculture. And cotton in transition is literally when you have farmers that are transitioning from a conventional agricultural to organic um, agriculture, and you can do that. Um, whatever site you are you know if you are a smaller brand and you have your own supplier of let's say jersey from portugal or whatever you can ask your your meal can you say do you have cotton in transition um which means that you're helping the farming industry so you're helping at raw material level to the finished product and you are able to do that without any added cost because they don't have the finished certification yet but you're helping them to get there amazing um obviously a complete mine of knowledge. Um, I, one more question for you. Can you share an example of a business that has had a really successful sustainable fabric sourcing strategy? Yes. <clears throat> My example will be a, um, you know, we can, if anyone is asking later, I can tell you, but it's a Danish uh, brand that actually talking about specifically the re regenerative agriculture, what they decided to do, there is a thing in the industry called Black Friday, like it or not, it's Black Friday and it's around November. So what they decided to do, they, um, created a foundation together with a non-governmental organization that work with uh, nature, very, very famous nature, fun for nature, um, fun for nature organization. And they said during the Black Friday weekend, everything you're gonna buy on our site, we're gonna donate around 10 euro 
of the total basket value of whatever you're ordering to this pound for nature who's working directly with farmers in a particular area of Turkey um, on, on enhancing um, sustainable practices within, within the farmer there. And that was um, very specific. They, they set themselves a specific goal of raising 90,000 euro, which they did. Um, and they said every donation you make, which you make without knowing because we're just taking 10 euro off your, your buying our product, is going to go into uh, producing five square meter of regenerative agriculture uh, soil, you know, and then they calculated how much carbon they uh, collected, yeah, uh, which is, which is very important with, with farming and cotton. So that's definitely an example. And everyone can do it. You can donate 1%, you can donate five pounds. It doesn't matter how big you are, everyone can do it. You just look up at a charity or an NGO that you know is working in this space and, and you do that. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we can hear, you can hear a bit more from Alicia in the breakout sessions, um, which we'll have at the end of the session. And just another thing to flag up on co relevant to some of the things which will come up, which is that we have a whole series of fabric switches. Um, so if you're looking for an alternative to a particular type of fabric or material, be it leather or cotton, um, you can use that resource and find alternatives. And we will be linking to exhibitors with that too, um, if one of the team wouldn't mind posting that link. Um, thank you. So our second speaker, um, is Stephen Chung and calling in very late all the way from China. Thank you, Stephen. We'd love to hear a bit more about you and what you're doing because it's really inspiring. Um, and if we could navigate to the slides, the re Recycle Tech slides, um, I'll give you a little time to introduce what you're doing. Uh, Recycle Tech is the partner for this session, so made it possible for us to bring to you all of this content. Stephen, if you could unmute yourself, brilliant. Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Stephen Chen from Recyctex. So it's really late here in China, almost like let's say 10 to uh, 12 o'clock p.m. But I'm glad to be here and uh, to uh, share uh, our inspiration with each one of you. And um, it's a great prayer that's to uh, have such kind of uh, online uh, cinema with each, each one of you, yeah. And as for Recyctex, and we are a textile innovation company. So basically, we are not a lot of fabric company from China. What we do is that we provide a full package of services to brands. And uh, actually, our core, product, our core product is recycled fabric. And it could be made from ghost fishnets and discarded clothes and post-consumer plastic bottles. But we also do a lot of uh, free consulting to brands, helping with them with uh, um, ac ac accurate information about what kind of materials they should choose and uh, the secret behind the certification and uh, free consulting of uh, trimmings package. And uh, also we help, be help brands with them with the proper marketing stories. For example, some brands they want to use uh, Econel recycled materials, but in communication they might use, they might see they are using one percent recycled nylon, fully made from ghost fishing net. Actually, it's not. It's only twenty five percent. And uh, uh, we we also helping with brands that is to um, communicate with uh, consumer. For example. Uh, when people are talking about um, recycle polyester, some people they will they will doubt whether the recycled yarn are made from post-consumer products. Actually, uh, right now in China, we have plenty of uh, post-consumer plastic bottles. Only two exceptions. Why is that? Some supermarkets they have uh, some soft drink bottles, and if they are, I mean, experienced. And so they have to be treated by a third party. So that kind of uh, plastic bottles, let's say less than 1% will be made into other containers or a textile use. So uh, that's a um, real situation. And uh, for us, we provide also very flexible service. 
and uh, make sure the almost like 200 meters to start with, especially for designer brands and uh, capsule collections. Um, we also handle big volume orders and it, it all depends on the brands, whether their uh, DNA or the keep um, uh, or, or the key, um, uh, shall I continue? Uh, if, I mean, I had a, another question for you, okay. if, if I could ask. Um, I mean, one of the things that we think is, is really inspiring about your business is that you have integrated sustainability at the heart of your DNA. Yeah. And um, you know everything that happens in your factory, so you oversee it right from start to finish. Um, can you tell me, uh, you know, whether uh, how how you uh, what what your goals are, what your plans are, what you would like to do through your business, not just in relation to supporting customers, but in relation to sustainability? So, uh, actually, I can tell you a little bit of story about our company and um, including me, and uh, we started recycle material since two thousand seven, and. So one of our goals is that is first is that we need to push the fashion industry towards sustainable uh, trends to be few steps by our company and yes we did and we help actually hundreds of brands including luxury brands and affordable luxury uh, luxury brands and designer brands and even fast fashion brands we already made it and. Uh, uh, second uh, of our goal is that we need to build up a system that is to reduce the plastic pollution in China. And we have a huge project that is working with NGOs in China to clean up the plastics in um, China coastal lines and also in West China. So that will be operated by my other company, but we study and uh, operate it already. It's, uh, five to 10 years projects. And uh, we had a very remarkable progress. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and one of the things which, which, which is special about you is the way that you partner with brands. So coming up with a solution almost from start to finish for how the brand can integrate recycling. We've had a couple of questions in the chat and yeah. um, I know that you're not in the breakout session, so I wanted to give a little, a few minutes now for you to be able to answer questions and respond to people who, who, are, who are going to want to know more. Um, a question about, well, MOQs. So you mentioned that you have a, could you re re reiterate what your MOQ is? Minimum order quantity? Yeah, and uh, for, we can actually, we have very special technologies that's uh, in technical way, we have two methods. One is that to um, twisting the yarn for easy warping process. So twisting yarn to bring down MOQ. The second is that we have very special equipment that is to rewind the big bobbins to smaller. That means uh, basically for one fabric, it could be like more than 50 sarans. That, that means, um, most of my friends that are doing such kind of MOQ, for us, we can operate from 200 meters. And we've had a couple of questions about microplastics, which is of course a hot topic. So how do you um, mitigate? I mean, the, 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 the sustainability issues in the fashion industry are complex <laughs> um, and it's difficult for any business to solve them all, but by recycling, uh, end, end of use plastics. Um, there is an argument that some that you're still creating a plastic material and, and microfibers are a problem. What's your take on that? Microfibers yeah. in water. Oh, uh, microfi microfiber pollution. It's indeed it uh, exists, and um, but we don't have uh, one percent of the medical proof that is how bad it is uh, to hurts our healthy and the ecosystem. And uh, I do worry about it. But mm. a lot of aspect is that it all depends on how we treat materials. If it's a materials, we brush it or we pitch it or we use some kind of freeze constructions. That means to say, no matter it's cotton, viscose, after shielding, it will be uh, some small fiber that will be 
I mean, uh, will be uh, mixed with water. So that water we cannot drink after all. So it still it has to be uh, with a certain water treatment. Uh, about uh, uh, the design of the fabric itself, and we knew every details. And if we choose some materials and the constructions and the finishing properly, we can in then uh, we can make a product that lasts long. I can show uh, I can show you a real example. Uh, you can imagine how long a product can last. A uh, for cotton T-shirts. I'm sure if you wash it every day after maybe two years, it's hard to wear. But um, uh, I always wear T-shirts. Actually, I have uh, seven pieces of T-shirts, which are made in 2015, when I attend a textile exchange in Mumbai. I can show you how. <laughs> so, since 2015, I wash seven t-shirts. I wear seven t-shirts each day and I wash it once each day, especially uh, from May 5th to end of October. Still, it can be in good conditions. So I, I'm not worried about uh, t-shirts or, or products that is well designed, will bring serious uh, microfiber pollution. So that's my answer. And we need to make it durable and as perfect as, as uh, possible. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I know that given that this is part of your mission, you'll, you'll be looking at developing the technology to solve all of those problems as well. Um, so do connect with, with Stephen uh, on his um, profile on Co. And he may not be staying with us much longer in this session given the time in China. Um, so I think I'm going to pass on now to Andy, who's going to introduce some of our other exhibitors in this session. And we still have a slide on Alicia for you to um, give us a very brief intro to what you do before we go on to the other exhibitors. Hi, everyone. So yes, I'm Alicia from AG Textile. So I've worked in the industry for around 10 years, um, textile industry. And then I started my own agency three and a half years ago. and my agency, um, it's I, I created a what I call a curated collection of sustainable materials. That's the, the main sentence. So I worked a lot with um, suppliers across Europe. I'm very European focused. 80% of my product are from Europe. And they're also coming from mills that have um, some ethical standards and um, they are sustainable 360 degrees. So it's not just the material, it's also the way they work and they operate. I also am working on a startup on a material onboarding tool, meaning that this is going to help, especially because of two big things that happened in the last year, Brexit and the pandemic, we realized we need um, a digitalization of the work that we're doing and we need to help brands onboard innovators materials as well as the tool that we are creating is to help innovators to connect with these brands, which is one of the main difficulties. So this is what I do and I'm based in London. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, so the content on these slides that we're, we're looking at now are a snapshot of business profiles on common objective. Uh, and as, as it's just happened with Alicia's AG Textiles, uh, Manisha is going to post a link into chat so you, uh, you can all find out more and also connect with these businesses through their business profiles. Um, and they're going to share in 60 seconds uh, what makes, as Alicia did so, so superbly, what makes their business stand out, uh, including any products and services that relate to this session uh, and the biggest opportunity they see for fashion brands in the current climate. So uh, first up, we have uh, Alma Green Design. Um, they're based in Spain and they produce fabrics applying circular economy principles in everything they do. Now, I actually don't think we have Alma Green Design in the room. Um, so I will wait just a second in case I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think I am. So, but that's the link in chat. So please do check it out uh, to find out more. They've developed two kinds of fabrics. Um, one is called Tula. It's a soft mix of recycled cotton and organic cotton. Uh, and the other one is, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it looks to me like it's Ika Lila, uh, and it's a combination of flax with recycled and organic cotton. So please do check out their business profile. 
Next up, we've got Anupurna Artisan Alliance, um, who are in Calcutta, India, and they bring sustainability and modernism to artisanal textiles, connecting East India's artisans and crafts to consumers all around the world. So over to you to tell us more, Amit. Thank you, Andy. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Amit Singha. I'm the founder of Anupurna. Uh, we are an um, artisanal textile producer based out of West Bengal, which is Eastern part of India. Um, so we are a very old 35 years old brand located at the heart of the weaving clusters that we directly work with. Um, so our primary mission and our brand stands for kind of employment and empowerment of artisans and the beautiful and traditional crafts that we work with. Um, so over the years, we have bring in a lot of elements that helped us connect with people uh, all over the world to these uh, beautiful crafts. Uh, so one of them is obviously sustainability. So we work with a lot of hand-spun uh, natural fibers like cotton, Indian silk, linen, etc., and then they are handwoven into fabrics, which are ideal for apparels, home furnishing, and more, and also other textile like accessories and more. Um, so uh, due to the nature of this uh, process, the, it, by itself, by definition itself, it has very low carbon footprint because there's no electricity or all hand processing involved. Also, our uh, uh, production ecosystem is more of a decentralized artisan production where the artisans are working from their home. Uh, obviously, that's a very advantage for the artisans, especially at this time of COVID, where they're working safely and they're uh, com you know, continuously able to work in spite of the COVID restriction that's happening. Um, but uh, due to that, there's one problem is as a brand that we, uh, it's difficult to get certified because the artisans are all clusters of production happiness across. Uh, but what we're trying to do is that ensure that the material that are used are kind of certified and organic in nature. So we have launched our organic handspun cotton collection and being handspun is a very different, te different texture and there's a very different, uh, you know, variety with, to it than you usually found in the, in a machine made cottons and silks that's available. Um, and also we um, work with only organic dyes and chemicals and also we have recently launched our natural uh, you know, dyes. And also because of this hand spun process, we're able to do customized made to order production for you know, uh, slow fashion brands with low MOQ as well. I'm and gonna jump in there Amit, that's amazing. Everyone, you can find out more about I that do. by, yep, yeah, brilliant, by going to the breakout room, which Amit will be in at the end of this session. We're going to fly through this because that means we've got more time in breakout rooms and in the breakout rooms is where the two way conversations can happen. Um, so it's really important. We have a good amount of time in those. Thank you, Amit. That was really fantastic. So next up, we've got Natrotex Eco Peru um, and they have been on a mission since 1977 to restore dignity and a degree of self-sufficiency to Peru's extraordinary textile history. They reutilize and repurpose agricultural and industrial technologies that generates self-sufficiency. So over to James. Thank you very much, Andy. The inspiration behind nature text began 5,000 years ago when ancient Peruvians invented the original organic and sustainable cotton, like alpaca in natural colors with no dyes of any kind, and even incredibly delicate filaments of gold, silver, and copper woven into extraordinary fabrics found in the finest museums today. With a PhD in archeology, span I founded NatureTex in 1997 to resuscitate and to industrially manufacture these extremely soft luxury fibers for modern markets and the most exigent fashion brands, designers, and startups. Today, these ancestral Andean fibers form the backbone of some of our more than 450 different eco textile products including yarns, knit and woven fabrics, apparel accessories currently exported around the world. Our trademark copper Fina fabric, an intimate blend of Peruvian Pima cotton and microfibers of pure copper metal, renowned for its antibacteriological, antimycotic, and even anti-COVID properties, is the only archeologically reinvented fabric for human health and well being. My mission was, and still is, to support local indigenous and peasant communities to achieve economic benefits by collecting from them and transforming into useful and durable materials, <clears throat> excuse me, these unique textile fibers under EU organic, GOTS, and fair trade certification standards. Join our mission 
share our story, and incorporate the original sustainable organic cotton, alpaca, and microfibers of pure copper metal into your collections to create distinctive and lasting value for the entire production chain. As my great aunt, Diana Vreeland, Vogue magazine editor said, don't think you were born too late. We all have that illusion. The only problem is if you think too late. Thank you. Amazing. Aren't these inspiring uh, suppliers, all of them? Absolutely brilliant. Um, and we've got a few more as well. Uh, so we've got Montebello next. Uh, ever since Montebello's foundation in 2013, they focused on researching and developing sustainable materials, sustainable materials, products and processes. Uh, so we're going to hear more now from Johannes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Johannes. Um, I'm the founder of Montebello, and we have our headquarters in Porto, Portugal. And um, as Andy said, we focus on uh, sustainable materials since uh, the beginning, um, eight years ago. And um, we work in all stages of the supply chain. So from fiber to spinning, uh, weaving, knitting, dyeing, and also garment making. We are a consultancy and an agency. So a lot of our customers come to us um, to learn more about supply chain and to dig deeper and to find also more sustainable alternatives. Um, and we are also work as an agency and uh, help fashion brands to um, produce, to, uh, to manufacture uh, with new suppliers, also to manage the processes and especially um, the sustain sustainability standards in their existing factories or in the new factories that they choose. And um, yeah, I think one of our uh, one of our focuses on materials are to avoid synthetics. So we are trying to um, avoid synthetic, synthetics whenever it's possible. We work a lot with uh, Portugal, as I said, but also with uh, Turkey, Bulgaria, and especially Taiwan, where we uh, co-develop uh, materials that you can also find on the um, uh, common objective partner textile. They already run some of the materials that we developed. Um, for example, waterproof organic cotton fabrics for jackets, uh, for windbreakers even. Um, and we source a lot on, uh, on and co-develop um, woven fabrics, jerseys, but also trims like elastics or, or labels. And um, yeah, me and my uh, colleague Stephanie will join the breakout session and answer all of your questions if you like. Super. Thank you, Johannes. So we're jumping from Portugal now to India. Uh, with Moral Fiber, who offer full service manufacturing and fabric, and they've helped generate livelihood support for over 2,500 artisans in Gujarat and other states. Over to you, Shailini, of your. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm Shailini from uh, Moral Fiber. And uh, uh, we are set up basically to create the fabrics. The way we say it is with hands and heart without costing the earth. Most of the fabrics are artisanal made and uh, may, they are inherently low carbon, low water consumption and almost carbon, no pollution to water, air and land. And uh, the whole, we are emphasizing more on the fabric making technology. Maybe they are cottons, but the way they we produce it, they have the lowest impact to the environment and it supports the community. So that is where uh, we stand out. Now, recently we have introduced uh, ESVs, that is environmental saving values. So we actually now measure how much of a, a, a savings uh, anybody who buys this fabric can make, it, it's good for the companies, it's good for the producer that we actually present the ESVs of carbon emission saving, water saving, and all those kind of parameters, which actually is a, a very, very useful tool so that uh, we, we put our uh, products for that. Also, uh, we have a uh, 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 lot of the, uh, concerns about the environmental uh, issues, the glo global uh, warming. So we follow uh, quite a few of the SDGs we are trying to meet. So supporting the artisans and also supporting uh, climate climatic issues. So that's what is a part of our um, uh, uh, USP. And uh, 
yeah, look out for, especially the way we produce the airy silk, which is a kind of a new kind of a ahimsa silk. Look out for uh, indigo filigree, the, the, the different level of, of uh, indigo work that we do, and all with hand, handcrafted fabrics. We have a complete uh, system that is set up for sustainability, circularity, and transparency. Uh, we work with smaller orders. We, we work from fiber to attire to fabric, the whole circle, circle chain. So anybody is looking for that, we would be very interested in talking to them. And uh, hopefully we just add value to what you do. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, and if anyone here is thinking, oh my goodness, there's so many great ones here, how am I going to choose which breakout room to go to at the end? You can actually go between them. So you can learn more about uh, lots of these uh, brilliant, brilliant suppliers. So next up, we've got Motif Handmade. Uh, and their mission is, is to ensure that the vast artisanal wealth of Bangladesh is part of the world's solution to sustainability. And we've got Jackie here who's now going to tell us a little bit more. Just to say, I'm a founder and designer at Motif Handmade. And I have been working with and living with artisans in Bangladesh since 1989. So together, what we want to bring to you now is that I can come alongside you and help you design fabric and other goods specifically for artisanal production. So the amazing flexibility that can come from that, we want to bring to you. So for example, I hope you can see these uh, fabrics. You could create these three beautiful coordinated fabrics just from one warp. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we can design together. One of the things that uh, we want to offer to you now is that we bring those kind of things to life and we want to get you started to get excited about working with The Handmade. Um, we have a free download of five steps to your sustainable handwoven fabric that you can go to our co-connect space with. Um, get started with that, get your ideas rolling um, as well through the uh, link there and we just really look forward to working with you our fabrics the yarns are recycled from the local garment factory waste which we know of in Bangladesh is immense so we're a zero waste fabrics zero carbon production and the heritage techniques that others have spoken about in India as well alive and kicking in Bangladesh and ready to move forward scalably with anybody Brilliant. So we really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jackie. Uh, moving on to Symphony Fabrics, um, who are in India, and they're vertically integrated manufacturer of organic and sustainable fabrics, including hemp, linen, eco-vera, tensile, and organic cotton fabrics. Um, so, so hello, everyone. Uh, I am Abhishek. Um, I am the director at Symphony Fabrics. Uh, and I'm the fourth generation. So our company is 90 years old. The parent company is 90 years old. Uh, we Symphony Fabrics are a global organic textile standard certified BCI, OCS and lensing registered company. Um, and we are manufacturers of fabrics and products. Uh, so basically we are pioneers of hemp, uh, organic cotton and corduroy fabrics. Along with that, uh, we, uh, we also manufacture only sustainable and uh, biodegradable and regenerative materials like uh, linen, uh, cupro, uh, and most of our business comes from uh, corduroys, hemp, and organic cotton-related products. Uh, we have set up our business in a way uh, that we can cater to both uh, the MNCs, the multinational brands, uh, also the mid-sized companies and uh, the new startups. Uh, so we uh, have a in-stock fabric collection of corduroys, organic cottons, uh, cupro and hemp uh, to select from. And in hemp, we have more than 40 different fabrics to select from. Um, so please join us uh, in our goal to disrupt the conventional cotton industry, even if the easy, uh, the, uh, uh, it's not easy. We all know it's not easy to disrupt the industry uh, and uh, do join us and uh, be a part of the uh, uh, be a part of our process. 
Thank you so much, Abhishek. Okay, moving on. So we've got a couple more left and then we'll go into breakout rooms. Um, the next one is Tokapu Consulting, uh, who connects artisan communities in rural areas with the growing demand for authentic, high quality and sustainable products in urban cities across the world. So Isabel, <laughs> I believe is with us. Um, hello, do you hear Hi. me? We can. Hi. <laughs> So hello everyone, thanks for having me here. My name is Isabel Waman and I'm the founder of Tokapu. And after 10 years of experience in design uh, for products in fashion, as well as in business administration, I founded this small company uh, where I work with a network of experts uh, with the aim to preserve and promote cultural heritage um, in textiles through design. Basically, as you say, we connect high skilled artisan communities from rural areas with the demand for high quality and unique products in fashion and textiles. So this is how we have been collaborating since 2019 with governmental and non-governmental organizations, foundations, fashion brands and design brands, as well as with technology companies who are uh, working in projects uh, related to artisanal uh, fabrics. What we do is starting from A to Z, we go from market research, trend research, brand conception, collection design or production, um, accompanying these processes. And I think um, it would be amazing to find uh, new contacts here and learn about your projects. Uh, we are curious and we are presenting in this opportunity these um, two uh, collections from, in, from Indonesia and Peru, as you can see on the pictures. So I'm happy to get in touch with you later. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you. That, that's brilliant. Um, and finally, Kokun, um, we're going to hear from Prakash. They're based in India and they provide a wide variety of luxury, non-violent, organic silk fabrics. Hi, everyone. Um, I started this project um, with the motto of Creativity Can Care, which is later um, renamed as Cocoon. So the idea was to create fabric, um, sustainable fabric, which can care for human beings, care for our indigenous people in Eastern India and of course for environment. And then we developed a lot of things like we made uh, one of the first organic um, bee silk. And um, I myself, uh, um, uh, I, I graduated as fashion designer. So I have good understanding about um, what um, uh, luxury needs. So um, all my development, um, I did as per my own requirement, like I know which fabric is suitable for dress, which fabric is suitable for bridles, which is good for laundry. Uh, so I have a wide variety of fabrics now in last nine years. And as I said, I started with six fabric. Now we have almost two, uh, 200 fabrics, including knits, um, uh, different blends with lensing, uh, lux, um, and also linen, uh, regenerative agri uh, cotton. So feel me as your partner in sustainability. If you have any uh, inquiry about or any question how to make your cool uh, luxury fashion collection sustainable, I'm your friend. Brilliant, excellent. Thank you so much everyone who has just uh, spoken. It is a privilege having you all here. And um, I know the breakout rooms will, will provide a great opportunity for you to share more about your businesses. So I'll hand over now to Tamsin who's going to introduce these breakout sessions. Thank you so much, Andy. So much inspiration there. So we have three breakout sessions now taking place. Um, one is Sourcing Solutions. So there you can connect with Tokapu, AG Textiles, that's Alicia, Montebello, that's Johannes, and Alma Green Design aren't here today. Um, but there's a, a lot to be going there on there if you're looking for uh, solutions for your fabric sourcing. Um, second breakout is Asia where you can connect with Anna Prima, Moral Fiber, Symphony, and Recyc Text. Stephen, if you can, if you're able to stay awake and stay on, <laughs> um, I'm sure there'll be people who would love to connect with you in there. Um, really inspiring product and work going on. And then finally, the Americas um, from Matif, uh, which is in the US and Bangladesh. Um, they really span both Asia and the Americas, but we've we put them here. Um, and Natural Text in Peru. Welcome everybody back to the main space. I think we have everybody back in the room. I hope you found that helpful. Um, I, I certainly had an inspiring session in sourcing solutions. Um, really great. So we co is a community and we're all about 
how we can work together towards our common objective, which is great fashion products that value the planet and the people behind them. Um, and to do that, we need to connect and work together. So um, do join Co if you haven't already. Um, I just wanted to flag up that particularly for this session, we have a number of relevant resources that's worth having a browse on Co. I mentioned that some of them are in the exhibitor hub. So if you go there, we've posted some so that you can find them easily. Um, but you can also, I would especially flag up Fabric Switch. If you look at the fabrics and fibers session, section on Co, you can find um, briefings for almost every fiber plus a series of fabric switches, which give you sustainable alternatives to common materials. Um, and then to mention the rest, so to those of you who, who are, who've joined this session, perhaps joined the earlier one, there's more to come. At 6.30, we're gonna be doing a brief update highlights, half an hour highlights on today for anyone who may have missed either of the sessions. Um, we will be recording, we have recorded these sessions and we'll be uploading those too in case you missed them. Um, going forward, of course, you can't take part in the breakouts that way and we, we aren't able to record the breakouts. So it's definitely worth attending the sessions in live. Tomorrow, production solutions. If you're producing products and you're looking for partners to do so, um, more and more, especially in the wake of COVID-19 where we've seen the horrendous impact on the supply sector of the cancellation of orders and the lack of win-win partnerships. More and more suppliers are saying we're not going to work this way anymore and more and more brands are saying they want to do things differently. So in the production solution today, two sessions which focus on different sorts of product um, allow you to find suppliers who can help you in the journey and that includes everything from design to fabric sourcing to production, to sampling, um, and even understanding the market opportunities. That's tomorrow. On day three, on Wednesday, pioneers and change makers. So anybody who's looking for low minimum order quantities, our first session is for you. We've got an amazing lineup of exhibitors who are looking for smaller brands who they can work with. It's a win-win. And in the afternoon, we'll be hearing from Safia Mini, um, founder of People Tree, and in the new artisanal se section, some, some amazing suppliers who are just doing truly transformational things for the communities they support. Um, on Thursday, big impact. So if you're interested in what's happening in the largest businesses in the fashion industry and how they are integrating, genuinely integrating sustainability um, and the suppliers that are helping them to do so. And in the second part of that, we've got a packaging session. So that's relevant to everybody, but packaging has a big negative impact and we can support you to have less of one. Um, and then Friday, the last day of the week, we're focusing on luxury. So everything from fabrics to production for luxury products. And in the uh, second session, jewelry and accessories, specialist suppliers for all of those. And some of you may have signed up before we were promoting the events in, in week two. So some really exciting ones there. Um, I'd like to give the floor to Marielle um, to tell us a little bit about the Latin American Showcase. Thank you very much, Damsin. Yes, I want to welcome you to the Latin American Sourcing Showcase on July 20. You will be able to access a Latin American network connecting bridges with their materials, with their culture, and building opportunities for sustainable and ethical sourcing. So we hope to see you there. And actually we have launched a hub, the Latin America hub, where you can see over 20 companies from South America, Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, that are ready to connect with you. So I wait for you, we wait for you on Tuesday 20th of July. And thank you so much to also Pro Ecuador who is here today for making this happen as well. It's going to be a really exciting session. I don't know if you want to post that link to the hub in the chat Definitely. so people can visit that. I will do that. Um, and then the final session, we're saving the, some of the best for last with Sourcing the Future, Blue Sky Thinking, latest exciting technology around how can we solve the challenges in our industry? And this is in partnership with PDS Multinational, which is one of the largest suppliers in the world, been a supporter for Common Objective right from the very beginning. 
and they also invest in innovative, sustainable technology in the fashion sector. So they'll be presenting what they're doing on a large scale with, with, with their larger clients, but also we will hear from some of the, the amazing tech solutions that they have invested in and why they've invested in them and where they're going. So don't miss that session. It's gonna be pretty amazing, um, the last session of the, of the week. Um, and then just to end on, on a final slide where we have a number of upcoming things happening. Um, Laura, final slide where we have um, some, so I'd mentioned earlier the awards, co-awards, many of the suppliers you're hearing from in this session and other ones are award winners. We, uh, re what we launched leadership awards with the purpose of putting the spotlight on leadership and the way we define leadership is great products, great services that do not um, damage the planet and that add value for everyone they touch. So there are six awards criteria, which you can see on the awards page. If one of the team would post that in the link, you can have a look. Um, they're open to anyone. All you need to do is create a business profile and co. And this really matters. We're all about partnerships, equal win-win partnerships between brands and suppliers. And that means brands being as transparent as the suppliers are about what they're doing or not doing. Um, the awards look at everything from the impact you're having to the plans and the objectives you're setting for the business. Um, and we will be promoting the winners at our brand leaders event at the end of November. Um, winners of the awards get uh, an award badge and get an increased ranking on co. And that really does make a difference. Our highest ranking businesses get 2,700% more views than our lowest ranking ones. So it's worth getting an award. Um, Brand Leaders will take place on 25th of November. It's a full day of insight from leaders in the sustainable fashion sector. So we'll be hearing from the entrepreneurs, the business owners who've made it, who've succeeded to build brands that are changing lives, but also selling fantastic products and growing profitably um, at the same time. How have they done it? How can you do the same? and what we, we summarize the best of, of what they're doing. So you can participate in that. Um, and then we are having another Crow Expo. We're already planning that in March next year. So I know we've had a number of suppliers in this session um, and it's great to have you here. We're a community, but if you would like to have more of the spotlight put on you, why not be a part of Co Expo 2022? We'll be starting the promotion in the lead up to that soon after this event. So the earlier you can get on board, um, the more we can match you and promote you as we lead up to the event. So two minutes left. Um, if you have any burning questions or, or things you want to share with this community in the, in the session now, please do so. We'll be keeping it open for another two minutes before we move on. Thank you to everybody for all your contributions and looking forward to seeing you in the next sessions.